and talk about um, Brattle Square first. Um, is there someone here for the applicant? Or, we, or Lizar, do you have something to share with us on this matter before we dive in? I, maybe I can... Oh, Maybe Jeff. I can jump in and take okay. some heat. Well, just to just to preface this, that and take some of the the um, the responsibility that uh, I asked that this be included because the planning board, um, when the planning board was considering, a, I think a couple of meetings ago, the question about whether or not this could be considered a repetitive petition, there was a good deal of discussion about well wh whether or not that was an opportunity for the board members to make comments about the proposal and it was clear that at that time it was not the time for the planning board to make comments about the proposal however my understanding is that if the BZA um, makes the determination because it ultimately is their determination as to whether it's whether it's considered a repetitive petition that they may then proceed into the uh, public hearing on what would be a new application and so since we won't have a planning board meeting next week I thought it was important to take this opportunity to allow the planning board after having discussed my, many planning board members discussed this quite a bit um, this would be an opportunity to make comments to the BZA if the board has them okay and and it is also worth noting the planning board has received um, quite a few emails and letters on on this topic from the public asking us to weigh in um, so uh, to the extent the board would like to offer an opinion to the BZA this would be the time for us to weigh in on what that opinion would be so Hugh so I have um, two sets of plans here one set came to me from uh, the staff and the other set I was copied on an email from, I guess, the president of At Pizza this afternoon that sent me a different set of plans. Um, and At Pizza apparently has done this at every BZA hearing, submitted one thing and then come in and shown something else. So it's hard for me to know what to comment about. Um, I thought the most recent plans were pretty gross, uh, equaling perhaps the the crimson corner uh, uh, canopy before they replaced it about 10 years ago, which was really awful. Uh, this is pretty, again, I think uh, I'll pass this around, but it seems uh, hmm, ill-considered. Uh, I think this is a case of an owner who really wants to be there um, and is flailing around with uh, insufficient professional advice, um, trying to get, put something out there that somebody will approve. Um, and um, because it's an important location, I don't think that's Good enough. <laughs> uh, I, is what? He, uh, so the question was raised whether we were aware the petitioner was in the room. So uh, I, I, I think uh, we we are aware, and we will give the petitioner a, a chance to comment. But it's uh, I, I I think getting some of these comments out based on where we stand now is is the place I'd like to start but yeah Steve um, I, I pretty much agree with you on, on the design elements but I also bear in mind that a denial of of uh, this application requires a two-year um, hiatus um, and um, my, my sense of it is is if you sort of divide the, the issues of this petition between a, a, the use and what is essentially the, a design review. Uh, the use, we, we've heard people uh, you say, well, you know, we, we don't need this use in Harvard Square or in this location and, the, and so forth. And um, uh, my sense uh, is that um, uh, 
that, that it's not this board or the ZBA's appropriate job to, to decide precisely what retailer uh, they are in, in, in their infinite wisdom going to uh, permit in a, in a particular location. Um, part of the use issue, of, uh, of course, is, uh, is the takeout. And, uh, and, and I think the, that that provision in the code uh, sort of arises from a somewhat uh, outmoded notion that takeouts uh, mean that there's a great deal of traffic, fast food, uh, you know, you're driving up to pick up a burger. And, uh, or what have you, and and and, and that would uh, you certainly have an impact on uh, on on the traffic and the neighborhood, and so forth. But uh, but I'm not sure that that is really a, a, an appropriate way of evaluating a restaurant of of this sort in the middle of, of Harvard Square, where there isn't parking, there isn't a parking lot, uh, there isn't a drive-through, um, and to the extent that, that there is takeout, uh, it, it's probably just pedestrians. Uh, that are walking by and picking up uh, their uh, their meal and uh, and taking off. So on 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 the use side uh, uh, of the analysis, um, while one or the other of us might wish for a different uh, use, I don't know what your preferences would be: a high end restaurant or a eyeglass place or or a bank. Um, but I, I I don't see any basis for denying. Uh, the, the application based on on, on the use, yeah. and so then we shift to the design review. Now, when we in the planning board have an application, we have fabulous staff to work with the applicant. And if we don't like the design of what we see, you know, we, we send them into the purgatory of working with our staff, and our staff. Uh, you know, brings them uh, to, well, can I say to Jesus? It's, you, know, you know, they, you know, the staff, uh, uh, you know, brings them to something that, that we can live with. And sometimes it has to go back a second time. Uh, but eventually, working with our fabulous staff, we get to something where, that we approve. I don't think we've ever disapprove something purely on the basis of, of, of the design because of the nature of, of, of that uh, staff support and, they, and that process. Now, I, I, I don't know whether uh, and, and, and to what extent the ZBA has access to that sort of staff support, um, but for goodness sakes, it's the same city and it's the same department and it's the same you know, resources of, of, of talented staff. Um, and so my recommendation, or what I would advocate to this board that we uh, recommend to the planning uh, board is to bifurcate this issue, that, that as a matter of use, you know, we you know, you support the use. We see no basis for, for uh, a denial on the basis of use. And on the matter of, uh, of design, these folks need some help. Um, and somehow or another, the, this city has the resources and should provide the, the resources you know, to provide that help and come up uh, with a design that we and, and, and the ZBA can, can support and, and approve. So, um, many of us on the board spent uh, tenure on the zoning board where we reviewed a, a lot of uh, fast food special permits. Um, but, but the criteria um, that it calls for, I mean, obviously the impacts of the, of the particular use, but it, there's a section of the criteria which the, the zoning board will have to make a determination of whether um, it's needed. And so that, that's where I think the zoning board got tripped up because there was a determination somehow that there was enough pizza in Harvard Square, and I, I, which baffles me completely, right? Uh, how can you have enough pizza in Harvard Square? <laughs> and, 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 but but uh, there, there are a couple of pizza haters or something. I, I don't know. They, want, they pre apparently prefer sushi, uh, according to an article I read by an esteemed journalist. So um, uh, uh, w w I think we have to be very clear on the record that, um, that they should 
they should look at that finding uh, um, uh, in, in light of the way uh, the, there's a kind of festival atmosphere of youth in that square, and, and uh, it readily supports m multiple pizza places, as, as uh, uh, Hugh so eloquently uh, detailed at our last hearing. So um, I think that they can find their way to get through the other, systematically go through the other findings so for impact for fast food and make sure that the applicant adheres to reasonable procedures so there's no uh, traffic and adverse impacts. And then I think they have to look at their their uh, their selves pretty carefully about this what seems like an arbitrary uh, decision to just say no that's an, we, we have enough pizza and um, that didn't make sense to me now relative to the design I'm sorry that you know the staff is going to be charged with designing the pizza place that doesn't seem like a service the city needs to provide <laughs> there's plenty of talented designer retail designers out there. Um, uh, uh, and it is a frustration that they're just throwing things at the wall, hoping something that will stick. It's a ridiculous process. Um, the canopy, you know, why not a canopy like the canopy that was there before, which for 30 years I stood under in the pouring rain waiting for the light to change, right, like all of us uh, that kept you know, my Boston Herald uh, dry. Um, so why not one of that? Why not one that was actually of a useful dimension that would provide shade into the into the uh, premises as well? And uh, but no, we get some kind of you know uh, uh, two foot six projection in pink stripes. It it doesn't make any sense to me at all. So um, uh, you know they're get, they are getting uh, ill ad, ill advised uh, in, in in my opinion. I'm also conscious, like all of us on this board, this is the tenth, I believe, the ninth or the tenth hearing on this matter at the city, and government is not working very well here. Um, uh, very self-conscious about that for me, and that's not reflecting well on this city. We're becoming the laughing stock of public process, and I happen to think that we've got pretty good public process, uh, so we have a we have a real issue ar around, uh, around this uh, application, and um, uh, I think the zoning board is aware of that very fact, I hope they are, um, uh, uh, and will do the right thing. Relative to the, to the design, um, they should go find. I, I, I don't think it's fair to say that the city staff should design the thing. No. It's just like, we, we collect a fee for it, you know. Yeah. Mayor, do you have um, I, well, I agree that the city staff shouldn't design it, but I mean, given what we've seen so far that none of us have liked, um, I think that it would be helpful if there was a way of asking the Board of Zoning Appeal to um, submit it for review to the department. I don't know how, how you feel about that, Aram, but I mean, I would like, I'd like there to be some cohesion in the design, <laughs> so. We're certainly happy to, to support in that way. It's a bit of an unprecedented uh, move because we're different departments that staff the two boards and there hasn't been a, traditionally a history of um, shifting things to planning board staff or to CDD, but um, if the BZA were to request it and ISD were to request it, we would be happy to, um, we would be happy to support in the way that the, the board suggests. And as part of our response, uh, may we request uh, that the ZBA so request <laughs> your yeah. support? I, I mean, we could certainly include that in our recommendation that, yeah. that you know, as as a sister board that we would recommend that they take advantage of uh, our staff and while hiring appropriate professional designers that they seek input from the staff um, to to really make this something that fits into the neighborhood and is of a high quality design. Should we volunteer to even take over the design review so we can be done with it? Yeah, and, and it, that may not be more work for us. That may actually end up being less work for us. Okay, so now now I hesitate before we <laughs> before we end up with design review for everything from the BZA. No, well, um, this is unusual though. Yeah, I agree. I think this is a particularly unique um, circumstance. I mean, first of all, the process is unlike any I've ever seen um, in Cambridge, and then secondly, the corner is just so significant that I think I think just based on that alone, we can make 
the case as yep. a planning board that, you know, again, it is unique. And so in this particular matter, we would appreciate it if the BZA would refer the design review to, to the board. Taste. <laughs> well, without being – Susanna it, does. We, 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 you know, it, it, design review is something that this board is accustomed to, it, to doing, and we could offer that uh, if the BCA were interested in taking mm -hmm. us up on it. Other comments? I mean, I, I have to say that I've seen a number of designs, and I like some of them, and I don't like some of the others. So – it may not be so much as, as one of eliciting new designs, but just saying, yeah, that that's the right way to do that. That's the right way to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also, I mean, it's been through the Historic Commission staff, I believe. And so, I mean, there, I mean, features have come and been rejected. Uh, so there's a, and I don't think we want to reopen the, say, the trellis question. Uh, I, I, I actually think that, that between the staff and, and us, we could probably make pretty fast work uh, out of this matter. And, I, and I, I just wonder whether we shouldn't suggest to the applicant that we do that now quickly without waiting to go back to the ZBA and asking them to refer it back to you and simply send it to the ZBA with, with a revised design and, and, and recommendation. Well, I, I think that Hugh pointed out the, the difficulty uh, uh, of the number of designs we have floating around here. And I think without having uh, a, you know, clear design posted, and, and it would be problematic to, to, to just conduct that tonight. But I, I do think we could offer it. Yeah, Ahmed. Look, I'm being here. Who, who should well, we address this? Oh, it so, is. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, I wanted to hear from the board first. We'll give the applicant a chance to Thank you. to speak. So. All I can comment on is uh, what everyone else has said. I mean, it seems like they've made every change that had been asked of them and more. And I think it just needs to be pulled together into one design and finished off. Okay. I mean, it looks like a perfect location for this. So, does the applicant wish to speak? So, please come forward to the mic and give your name and address. And uh, Drew Murphy, uh, Washington D.C. And <coughs> Drew Murphy from and Pizza, Washington D.C. Um, we were here uh, a couple of weeks ago and appreciate a lot of the comments. From many of those comments, <coughs> um, Michael Astori, the CEO, who was here that night, as you may recall. Um, has been very involved in the design, and um, and I will once again communicate what we've heard tonight, and also to Mr. Cohen's point, um, w there are so there's an architectural staff that can move very quickly with your group if that's the direction, and um, uh, and uh, very appreciative of of uh, of that lead and, and those thoughts. So we have no problem with that whatsoever. So if I, if I could just make a comment, based on, 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 on the trajectory of this application uh, to date, you know, you, maybe you should go beyond your, your talent or architectural staff and, and, and engage somebody local who is familiar with this city and familiar with this board and, and the ZBA and will save you a lot of time and grief uh, and just get it done. It's a small design mm -hmm. project, and, and, and you're chasing your tail going around circles on this thing. So I would suggest that you consider that possibility at this, at this point. It sounds great. Uh, uh, May I speak? Yeah. Uh, does the board wish to hear from the public on this matter? As it is not a public hearing, we are not obliged to, but we do from time to time open it up to public comment. So, I, 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 you, know, if, it, it, you know, it's not an overwhelming attendance here. So, uh, it, it, okay. So, um, so unless anyone objects, no. All right. So, yes, Mr. Williamson, uh, as usual, 
Name and address, three minutes. James Williamson, 1000 Jackson Place. Um, I was glad to hear Tom say, uh, sort of correct this idea that um, that it, use really isn't relevant because, of course, it is very, very specifically one of the criteria, maybe not for the planning board, but for the Board of Zoning Appeal. Now, and that is, is there a need for this kind of, a, for, for this such an establishment? Um, now, I understand that this can be seen, there's a certain amount of subjectivity that come in, can come into play, but the whole reason for there being a fast food special permit to begin with is to have some kind way of evaluating and some tools for drawing the line somewhere at how many the, 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 the efflorescence of fast food joints in Harvard Square. Otherwise, anything goes. So there's a set of criteria, which were, it's a political process to some degree, certainly. But so this was placed as, as one of the criteria. And how do you evaluate whether there's a need? I don't think, I disagree with Tom, that it is arbitrary. Um, you may love pizza, you may hate pizza, but the fact is within two blocks of where this proposed establishment would be, there are, I think, five existing pizza places. You could like them or not like them. Some of them claim to have the freshest ingredients in the world. Um, Otto just up the street, Ogie, Pinocchio's, Just Crust. So, and then there are others more out toward the periphery. So. Is that relevant? Well, how do you evaluate whether uh, we want it, you know, whether it's a good idea to have another fast food place in an area that's regulated with a fast food special permit? But there's another piece to this which gets to the design, which is the problem, part of the problem with the design is that it's driven by the use in this case. It's a corporate pizza chain that has a logo and a design motif that is, I think, demonstrably has been proven to be quite important to them in what they hang on to while they're fishing around for other things that are going to meet with your approval. And so that is, as long as they sort of keep the black and keep the end pizza uh, logo, we can do almost anything you want. So, so the, the fact of it's being a pizza place is, in fact, driving an important piece of the design, which I think is worth your consideration. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Madam Chair, uh, Commissioners, um, I'm Suzanne Blier from Five uh, Fuller Place. B as in boy, L I E R. I'm a professor of art and architectural history. This reminds me of a senior thesis, a doctoral thesis, a book that I'm editing, where you begin with a particular process, the student submits the paper. You edit it, you hand it back, you expect the next um, uh, revisions to come back. You've already agreed to a set of concerns. They go to the next stage, they, you correct that, it comes back. And that's not happening here. I mean, by the time they've come back 10 times, there's a problem in the process, and it is that they're not following the process. So in this case, they had agreed to a number of things from the beginning that either the CHC or the Harvard Square Advisory or other groups along the way had insisted that they do. And we find in the course of this that they're coming back. It's not that they're paying attention to the public. They say they do, but they had offered to add an historical dimension to this particularly important piece of it. But instead, you're right, it's a kind of mishmash and it's a kind of disrespect for the process. They came in today with these new plans. The reason that the BZA had such a problem with them is that they came in late twice. This is not the way a process in the public can work. We haven't seen the plans. I mean, I happen to, to get them. But this, this really is not the way for a public process for an important board like the planning board to be working. They're, they're gaming the system for whatever reason that they're doing, and they have been successful with it. What do I think of this particular plan? To me, it looks like Candyland. It looks like Disney. It looks cheap. It looks problematic. You have an awning 
and then you have the umbrellas underneath it. They were required by the advisory to take down that awning and put up umbrellas. Now it's a duplication. You don't need umbrellas under an awning, right? And, and there are a whole series of things about this that are just deeply problematic. It's not that I oppose Ann Pizza. I mean, frankly, if you go into these um, takeout uh, stores, restaurants, and places like New York and Washington, they are shockingly devoid of people in them for whatever reason that is. There's loud music. Um, and they get great reputations. Will it add something to Harvard Square, perhaps a bit of energy? I would prefer Milk Bar, frankly. I think that's a little bit more um, of the kind of things that, that uh, there might be a need for. But I'm concerned about the process. And if we allow a national chain that's growing and very much wants to come here to this particular spot, we have said from the outset there are many other places in Harvard Square that would work as well. I mean, there's so many closed stores now. And the problem with fast food or formula businesses is not so much that we're simply losing the character of Harvard Square, which we are, but they are willing to pay leases that are beyond the pay of impossible. And so they set a standard for every other. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Marilee Meyer, 10 Dana Street. Um, and I come from a historical um, side of things, which would uh, be for design, which is not necessarily your, your perv um, purview. But I, I uh, appreciate your comment about being a very important corner and being in a historical corner and being part of the square that um, identifies it's a, a sense of place. And, and part of that, and um, to have um, striped awnings, and it's it's actually very worthy of a strip mall. You can find that in in Assembly Square with, with your your sleek outdoor um, uh, seating, etc. But I also want to um, uh, warn the um, the planning board because I've seen it over and over again with the historical commission that um, once you start getting involved in a applicant's design, then they are complying to what you are suggesting and you get backed into corner because there's no place else to go because the applicant is complying and then you end up designing what you think is good for the square. And it's their responsibility to design the, um, the building, not the planning boards. And um, so um, that is also not taking into account the, the um, context of the, of the square itself. And um, uh, frankly, somebody made a comment about um, uh, milk bar being appealing to 12-year-olds. Well, you know, fine. But my, um, my um, focus is on how to protect the integrity of that corner. And um, when you have uh, plate glass that comes to the floor, et cetera, that's not, that's not necessarily uh, part of the architectural vocabulary. But to also follow up on what Mr. Williamson had said uh, um, about the branding of this business itself, the, f the fact, um, it is indeed true, um, and pizza, black, very severe, very gen um, generic, um, um, a branding, that's essentially what um, um, Dunkin' Donuts and, and Target's they have their, their logos and their brand, and you know it from across the, uh, across the street and everything. Um, so I don't want to see a brand, that strong a brand, as I'm driving up Mass Ave, and I'm looking at the coining and the brick and the, and the sandstone of the architecture. I do not want to see um, the, the um, branding of pink and white um, stripes and severe uh, black and white that is not integrated and um, just too generic. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to be heard on this matter? Okay. What's the board's pleasure on, on forwarding a recommendation 
I, I do think we have essentially two issues that we could choose to speak on here. One is the, the question of use and need, if we would like to offer an opinion on that. And one is a question of design and, uh, and the design review process and where it goes from here. Um, so maybe I'll take those in order and say, do we wish to forward a recommendation as to the appropriateness of this use and the appropriateness of the special mm -hmm. permit in Harvard Square? I, I think that we should offer a, a, a recommendation on, uh, on that. Uh, you know, when you use the uh, criteria of need, uh, as Tom alluded to, I mean, really, how do you how do you measure that? Uh, you what's their need, and especially, you know, how do you ascertain need at a, at a time that there are a significant number of uh, retail vacancies in Harvard Square, and that retail in general in this country is is under uh, enormous uh, pressure due to competition from from the internet. Uh, so, uh, how, how do you how do you ascertain need? I mean, I mean this is a, a a retail area, at least first floor is retail in uh, in Harvard Square, and um, and even the notion of saying we have five pizza places, well. You know, every every one of those pizza places is is, is different and uh, and and unique in their own way. It, it would it would be like saying, well, you know, we already have, you know, five restaurants in Harvard Square that serve uh, beef, and I think we have enough beef in in, in, in Harvard Square. It, it, it's it, it, it's absurd and and and, and, and arbitrary um, in measure. So I I I, I think. Uh, well, I might have different preferences, and, they, and the ZBA might have different preferences. I, I don't think uh, that there is a reasonable or a rational basis for turning me down this application on, on the basis of use. I think that, uh, you know, uh, this language was in place when I was on the zoning board. Um, and I think um, part of the purpose of the language in the ordinance was trying to exclude certain uh, restaurants that maybe had 10,000 or 20,000 locations. There's one everywhere. And um, so trying to find words that would allow the zoning board to do that, you know, we've, we've got these words. But there are two ways to look at need. If you somebody said, well, we're going to put in a um, car wash in Harvard Square, we'd say, no, you don't need a car wash in Harvard Square. Uh, so there are certain kinds of uses that, while they are probably permitted, aren't appropriate. The other way to look at need is we've already got enough of that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, if the person who wants to bring the 23rd bank into Harvard Square doesn't need a fast order food permit. Um, so I, I think we have to caution them to, I mean, because it's clear that we need pizza in Harvard Square. There's been pizza in Harvard Square for 50 years. There have been a variety of outfits, you know. And uh, we've lost some. We've gained some. It's a dynamic thing. And looking at that situation, I think you have to be very conservative as a zoning board to, to shut the door on yet another with a somewhat, you know, different take on things. Um, that's the way I would present that notion. Others who want to weigh in on the question of, of use? Yeah, Patrick? I think I agree with the way he has put it. I mean, um, you know, the, the, the statute requires that not we, but the BZA makes the determination. Um, so whether we think that's a good idea for the law is not up to us or the BZA. And 
we need to make a judgment. I, I think the way Hugh put it is appropriate. And uh, I mean, it, it seems like this retailer thinks there will be a need. Um, I, I would be curious to check it out. I could imagine others would be. Uh, not that my taste is should be the determinant. Um, so I, I would be perfectly comfortable uh, uh, making that recommendation. Are we going to stick with that topic or are we going to talk about design as well? I'm sticking with this topic. Well, one at a time. I'll come back to, to design a a after this. So anyone else on use and need? The need is somewhat akin to the concept of demand. Right. Yeah. And if there isn't demand, it's not going to survive. Right. There's plenty of demand. Okay. I think part of the notification behind the language was to think that Bartley's Burger Cottage couldn't compete with McDonald's. Mm -hmm. And that McDonald's would drive out all the, the family-owned high quality, you know, quirky places in the square. Um, that's part of the motivation behind that language, I think. I'll tell you what we need. I know what we don't need. We don't need a boarded up vacant retail suite at the 100% corner in our city. We do not need that right now. It's awful. Um, and. It's a thumb in the eye, and we need some activity, and we need some life, and we need someone to try something in that corner soon. That's what we need. I think pizza, of all foods, people are really picky about their pizzas, you know. They really are. I've, pe I've seen people traveling to Detroit, not for a pizza, but they're like, oh, my God, there's nothing like it in Boston, you know. And so, you know, br bring it on. Okay. All right. Then um, it sounds like uh, we're comfortable recommending that uh, this be seen in a holistic light as to all of the many needs in Harvard Square and that, you know, where the applicant clearly has identified a demand, uh, we're comfortable that, you know, the need is there uh, and we're, uh, the need for trying something and having activity and liveliness in the corner is certainly there, and so, okay. Um, then let's move on to design. Thatcher, you want to jump in on this one? Uh, sure. I mean, you know, as Hugh pointed out, I don't feel like we're really in a position to judge the design quite yet, because I guess there's sort of a couple things being circulated, um, and we, I mean, we sort of received a presentation last time, uh, but it was we probably shouldn't rely on that for this recommendation. We're, we haven't received a presentation here, so I'm not sure what to say about design. I'll, I'll just comment that, you know, the formal packet that we received, you know, I, I've, I've never loved it. Um, I don't think it's because of the color scheme or the large logo, as some have mentioned. It's it's more just the way it all fits together, and I think I just we're not ready to recommend anything. But I, I do I just want to add a comment on the idea of us becoming the reviewer. Maybe this is already clear to everyone, but obviously I don't think we should do that without the BZA actually asking us to. That would be correct. Right. It, and they would need to say, we will do whatever you say, because otherwise we put them in a really bad position. Um, and it, yeah. Okay. You, do you want to comment on design further? I thought, thought we nailed it before. So. Okay. All right. I, I, I would simply say if, if, if we're not going to, you know, preempt them and do the design review, I mean, I, 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 I think we should at least affirmatively recommend uh, that uh, that we do it simply at, at, out of acknowledgement that, A, A this is what we do, mm -hmm. uh, and, B, we have the staff to support us in, in, in so doing. Um, and it's uh, you know it's a quirk of uh, of uh, of the zoning code uh, the, that in, in this particular instance you know they have to do a, a, a design review which you know uh, isn't really the, the the centerpiece of 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 of, of what they uh, ordinarily do. 
Um, I, I, and I would say to the applicant, I've already uh, suggested uh, that you get a, 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 a local uh, designer who's experienced and has a relationship uh, with, uh, with the city and the, and the boards. I, I'd also just comment uh, in passing uh, that your materials, design aside for the moment, your materials are abysmal and confusing and inconsistent. Yeah, and even if there's some gem buried in there someplace, it's frustrating to the boards that look at it, and it's wasting our time and energy, as it is right now. So you're really shooting yourself, and you have shot yourself in the foot, in the design itself and in the organization and presentation. You know, this ain't rocket science, and, and you know, if you want to get this thing passed in, the, in, in this city, there are people who can advise you on how to get this done and, and present us with materials in, in both uh, substance and organization you know, that we can readily work with. So is the, is the board uh, agreed that we will, we will make the offer to the BZA that if they are so inclined, we would be open to taking on design review with the help of staff. Yeah, Iram, do you want to comment on this? So I, I've just been spending a little bit of time thinking through this and um, just want to be super sensitive to stepping on the toes of a different board and a different set of staff. And I wonder if the offer could be more collaborative in nature rather than um, suggesting that CDD and the planning board essentially take over the responsibility, given that there is a lot of interest and planning ongoing in Harvard Square. And the Historical Commission has a role, CDD has a role uh, through the advisory committee, and of course ISD, that we might offer uh, some sort of collaborative review process where all departments could be working together with the developer so it isn't so much seen as us um, usurping the role. Yeah. So I guess my only comment on that is if that streamlines the process rather than gets us into multiple more, you know, ten more hearings, I, I'm, I'm good with the idea of a collaboration. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I take Thatcher's point uh, as well, which is, like, we, we should not be inserting ourselves into a process if we're going to essentially add more layers here. My, my suggestion was more on the staff side um, because I, I actually think it could be somewhat problematic for the board to take on the responsibility okay. for the BZA just because um, – but per the zoning, it is really their, yeah. um, okay. their Okay, that's a helpful clarification. So in which case, we are not suggesting that we take on the design review, but rather that our staff work with the uh, Historical Commission and the BZA staff to uh, help with the design review. Is that acceptable to everybody? Whatever works. Okay. Seems like they've been too collaborative. You know, they've got too many. Too well, many irons it in the sounds fire like, there. yeah, it uh, that it's, it would be designs. good to have them all in the same room. Right, exactly. But they need somebody from the city to, to guide them. I, I, I don't know what the process has been to date, but it has been dysfunctional and ineffective. Yeah. Yes, okay. Um, so. Jeff, do you have what you need in terms of uh, information from the board for a recommendation? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. It's, it's my colleague uh, over to the side of me that it's uh, generally writing the BZA comments, but I, I think it's clear I've taken some notes. We'll all – we'll Do all you have what you need? I <laughs> – <laughs> Yeah, that's right. probably right. If, if, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, do you, we vote on a recommendation? I forget. I, I guess I want to I want to comment on Hiram's comment. Oh, okay. Because I think um, there are three or four boards with different roles, and there's an increasing awareness of the importance of design in the square, and that changes need to be made and uh, that to find a way 
for these all these entities to work together cooperatively in a singular process is a very important thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And 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 I think yeah, I agree with you, Hugh, that it's worth stating strongly that we think that's an important thing and, and that we would be very supportive of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, and I, I would just add that I think the point that Aaron made, which is important from a zoning standpoint, is that it, despite the board comments about taking on different parts of the review, it ultimately is the BZA's jurisdiction. Yeah. So if, Agreed. like, just like you're doing now, it's always, um, and it's in the zoning, in fact, that the planning board can review applications and make comments, yeah. and the BZA sometimes communicates back that they would like the planning board to look at a particular issue and submit comments on it so I think that if if the BZA were to take up that recommendation it would probably be in the form of having you know asking the applicant to come back during this portion of the agenda um, the board will this board will not meet again till the end of the month but by that point the, maybe the they'll, there'll be a, a, a sense staff of what the BZA wants to do <laughs> and staff can can certainly look into it but the um, but yeah, that then it, it would if it, if that did occur and it came back to the planning board for further review, it would be in in this context. Okay. All right. And Liza has indicated that yes, we should vote on those recommendations. So, do I have a motion to forward the recommendations uh, we have just discussed on use and design regarding the application for and pizza? So did. Hugh. So Steve. Second. Sure. All those in favor? All right. And, and honestly, I think one hour with Susanna and this problem goes away. So I'm going to excuse myself and turn the floor over to Hugh, who will lead the discussion on uh, the antenna application. And I wish you all good luck. Are you allergic to antennas? I am allergic to antennas. <laughs> I'm with them all day. <laughs> exactly. Okay, this is a BZA case uh, 013783-2017, 1815 Massachusetts Avenue, which is Leslie University's University Hall. This is Leslie University's University Hall, and there's a proposal to add um, some uh, cellular facilities to a building that already has a lot of cellular facilities on it. Is there somebody here who's going to? Uh, no. No. Okay, then I would make a very. We received a package of material, which gives us completely insufficient information to make a recommendation. So I propose we recommend that it that the BZA not act on this case based on this material because this is an important site that we have been very interested in for many years. Yep. Is that a motion? Yep. I'm sorry, who made the motion? Um, did. Hugh did. Who seconded? Mary seconded. Mary seconded. Based sure. on four for information, uh, not to act. So, the last official action is so, to not act. So we are adjourned.